Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Double. I am a big fan of the Boss GX100. Um, gosh, back in the day when the GT3 and the GT5 came out, I had a GT5 and I had a bunch of other effects. Uh, and I ran it with my Soldano and I, I loved the options within the GT5 and with a lot within a lot of the Boss multi-effects pedals you get a lot of options i've heard a lot of people say that you're defeating the purpose of using the gx100 with just a single amplifier and the four cable method and i beg to differ some amplifiers don't have effects loops so this wouldn't apply to you if you have an amplifier that you just plug right into the front you don't have an effects loop and you just set it the way you set it. This isn't that method. Sure, there's a lot of value in the cabinet emulation within the GX100, and there's definitely a lot of value in the preamp emulations and all the models that are in there. But then, of course, you have to remember that there's compressors and distortions and fuzzes and overdrives and a lot of different delays. You get a lot of really good effects and a touchscreen and expandability and recordability you get a lot of options and you get sure you get the the cabinet simulation and you get all of the usb connectivity but a lot of players have an amp or <clears throat> a few amps and we love that preamp sound within that amplifier we want to be able to take advantage of it within a multitude of ways integrated into our effects i love taking an amp and seeing how different effects make that amp react. The GX100, it's a great multi-unit for having a bunch of pedals at your feet with a lot of options to turn them on or off at the touch of a single switch or a touch of a couple of them. You can run it in a lot of different modes, which gives it a lot of flexibility. To say that you're not fully getting the, the most out of the unit, running it four cable method into an amplifier, to say that you're not getting the most out of it, I think you have to also consider that some people don't value that. So in order for them to really get the most out of something, they want to be able to use it the way they can. So. I want to talk about how to set this up real quick and then bring up the software on my computer and run through a couple of different things you have to think of and keep in mind. And one of the things that really got me thinking about this is kind of explaining the preamp and the power amp to somebody and how to use something like this. What we want to think about and why I want to use this little Friedman BE Mini is it's basically the Friedman BEOD pedal, but with a power amp section. And it has an input, and of course on the back it has a, a speaker output. I have my speaker plugged in here, but it also has in the back, I'll pull some stuff up on the screen here to kind of lay it out a little bit more clearly than just pointing at some cables. But I have the send and the return, okay? That's my effects loop. And what does that mean? Okay, the send is basically an output of the preamp. Instead of having a lot of power and the ability to move a speaker cone back and forth the way it should, the preamp section is not designed to really move a power speaker. The speaker output of this is designed to move a speaker. You know, it has gone through the preamp section and then bumped over to the power amp section. And now in this guy, it's just a little thing. And these amplifiers, they're, they're, they're big things, okay? But the concept is still there. There's a preamp section and then a power amp section. We're gonna plug our guitar into the GX100's input. Simple enough, that makes sense, right? In, guitar flowing into the GX100. Okay, then around the back of the GX100, we're going to take a cable to our send and return section of the GX100. This is where it gets a little confusing to people because our amplifier has a send and return on the back of it, okay? And the GX100 has a send and return. So people go, oh, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. 
the send of the GX100 is basically an output. It's, a, it's another output. There's an output section, yes, right next to the input, there's an output. We'll get to that, okay? But first, we need to plug in this second of our four cables. You also have to do something within the software to activate it. Otherwise, you just end up hitting the power amp section. So be forewarned, don't turn anything on yet. Just don't, don't do any of that. And when we start changing through a lot of these patches, I'm gonna tell you, turn your volume down on the amplifier or down at the patch. I use my foot switch as a volume. You really wanna be very aware of the fact that you might kick over to a patch that doesn't have uh, your setup just right. You need to go in and set up the software. You need to set up the patch right in order to do this. So out of the send, the signal is flowing out of the GX100 at that point into the input on the front of the amplifier. This is going to hit our preamp section. We can think of that preamp as a pedal, okay? If we have an effects loop, that send on the effects loop is now the output of that preamp pedal. And this is, like I said, just the BEOD pedal, except it has the mid and some different options, but with a power section. And so this gives you an insert point. The effects loop is really an insert between the pre-amplifier and the power amplifier. The power amplifier moves the speaker. The pre-amplifier really is just amplifying our guitar signal a little bit in, in, in reactive ways, distorting it, doing things like that, getting it ready for the power amplifier to do what it needs to do, to do its thing, okay? So what's the next step? We're gonna take our third cable and we're gonna come out of the send. So we're sending signal out of our preamp now, our little distortion pedal in there. That cable from the send is going to go to the return of our GX100. That's now going to send our preamp output to the GX100 and that info will return into the GX100. And some amps have channel switching. So you can have a clean preamp or a dirty preamp. So it's, it's like having a, a pedal that's got an on state and then an altered on state. That's what the preamp is. It's, it's on and if you channel switch it, it's now altered, okay? So we're sending out of our preamp pedal. We basically have grabbed the pedal and we're throwing it into our loop within the GX100. So now that we have completed that part of the loop, we've gone into our preamp and then back out of our preamp into the GX100. Now we're gonna take one more cable and we're gonna to go to the output section. For now, we're just gonna do this mono. We're gonna go output left slash mono, and that cable is gonna come back into the return, and that's gonna complete the circuit that now allows everything to go to the speaker. So and now what's everything gonna be? Well, that's gonna be what we decide within our software. The easiest way to do this is to pick a patch, anything really, and don't turn your amplifier on yet, okay? And make sure your volume is all the way down because in a lot of amplifiers, once you hit this return, once you start doing things, and once you, if you pull up a patch that has the send and return bypassed from the GX100, then you're going to get really loud and uncontrollably loud, and the GX will then be the volume controller. And the nice thing about the GX is there's several stages within this software that we can control the volume and our output levels. We have a master volume here that will be for that patch. We also have, of course, our foot volume and we can set um, different positions, a volume minimum and a volume maximum. What you wanna do is pull up one of these user patches and just delete the amplifier. Like if I go over here to this one, when you pull up almost any one of the user patches, there's almost always gonna be an amplifier in all of them. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to start dragging things out of this 
you know, you get this out of here, get, get things that you don't want in there. Um, and you might not want a boost, you might want a distortion. We're going to go ahead and leave the foot volume in line. Um, you may want to EQ, you may not want to. You can leave it and turn it off. Uh, that's always a thing. You can go to the chorus, turn it off. There's going to be ways to assign all of that to foot switches. That's a different tutorial, of course. What we're doing right now is for cable method. So I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to figure out what it is I want exactly in this patch, and, and we'll go from there. I've decided a couple of things that I want for my patch here. And it's a pretty simple one. I've got a wah at the beginning, uh, compression, the XOD, a noise suppressor, and then the foot volume. And then there's a rotary, chorus, a delay. I've set all these for now for mono for this particular patch. Uh, I also have a reverb and then uh, a second reverb, which is the shimmer reverb, which is really nice. I love the shimmers. And then for this, I have the master, the memory level at 100. So this is going to be me. This is going to be my setup for using an amplifier. This is going to be kind of my base setup. These are the, the pedals that I'm going to want to hit the front end. And then we're going to have stuff that's after the distortion pedal, the preamp, within my little head here. This works with combos. I can, I can basically now take this four cable method and set up the GX100 with any one of these units. Now there's going to be tweaks for each one. And of course, then you can save a different patch and label it that way. But the key thing here when we do this is to go up to our top section and we want to grab send return this little green guy right there send and return we want to grab that and we want to place it in our chain now you can do it however you want some people do it this way some people do it that way yeah i'm going to go ahead and pop the send and return right there so my Wah, my compression and my distortion are then going to leave the GX and they're going to hit via the, the second cable. They're going to hit the input of my amp and that's going to be the preamp section. Okay. And then that return here is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see if you, if you turn it off, it's blacked out. And then if you turn it on, it's that particular color. And then the return is going to then come back in. And the reason I have it this way is because then that noise suppressor will be after the preamp. So if I end up using a lot of gain and get the, the preamp, the distortion of this guy going too high, I want the noise suppressor to kind of get it, especially if I add some compression or drive to it. I want to make sure that I'm getting the noise suppression after all of the noise makers. Makes sense, right? And then I have a foot volume. Some people like to foot, put the foot volume at the beginning of the chain or right before overdrive. For right now, I'll go ahead and put it after the noise suppressor. And then that way, I won't be fading out my delays. If I fade out my guitar with the foot volume, the delays kind of keep on going. The reverbs keep going. Sounds natural, sounds like it's in a room a little bit more. That's my basic setup right now. Now, at this point, I could send a second cable out of the right output to the return of any one of these amplifiers. They all are, are a little bit different. For example, the Saldano, I would have, I would actually still have control over the EQ. I would have master volume control. Whereas with like my Marshall, if I hit the return, I lose all of the control. I have no EQ. Of course, you don't have gain or anything like that from the Marshall. 
you're just hitting the power section. It's powering my signal, all of my other signals, powering the preamp. I could do it the other way. I could use the Friedman here as just the right channel and do my four cable method into my Soldano and have that really nice Soldano preamp get my left channel and then have my Friedman power amp section just get the right channel. So there's a stereo setup using any one of these preamps as the as the guitar preamp and then returning left and right and setting up a couple microphones it gets to be a lot and you have to think about phase cancellation and all of that right now let's just hear it mono let's change things around even more okay so i have added uh this kind of doubling through the pitch shifter just just a just it's very mild just a little bit to kind of bring in a little bit of sound you know, but basically like a little bit of a doubling sound, all, less than a chorus, basically. I have a phaser. And that phaser is before my, ah, that phaser is before the preamp. And then I've even gone ahead and assigned a couple of things. When I hit just one button right now, I have it set up so that I'm going to bring on the compression and this overdrive the centaur overdrive but also look at this level right here this one button press is turning on two pedals and also bring up my delay level so not only am i driving getting more sustain i've also i've increased the delay level just at the press of a button. So that alone, you can't do that with a bunch of pedals, you know, you have to, you, you'd have to do three button presses, reach down and make it, you know, that, look, that alone for somebody who is messing with pedals all the time, just being able to do that, take advantage of the preamp, hit one button, add some uh, compression, add some stuff that you want, change some stuff, we want to change things, right? We're guitarists. We want to change things. It's what we do. <laughs> so speaking of change things now, so now I've, I've taken full advantage of everything I have here. I have the preamp, which is, as you can see, if I, if I bring the gain up, I'm, I'm juicing it up. If I bring my level up, I am getting control of the amp all around. So I'm increasing, I'm turning up my distortion pedal and I can bring up the overall volume of the amp. I just need to make sure I don't get too loud here. Okay, so that's, that's great. I have no amp section in here right now. I have a send and a return. So that's all four of the cables being used. So if, if we really want to get next level with this now, we can we can bypass this distortion pedal in here this little distortion pedal in this in this friedman first off i love the friedman of beod it's a great sounding distortion pedal it's one of the reasons why i figured why not buy a friedman B, be mini because it's that distortion pedal with the power section right you just have to know make, make sure you either have a speaker cabinet plugged in um or you're using it properly to record you know what i mean um, you never want to plug a speaker cabinet into one of these minis while it's on and you're using it with just the return or something like that. It, you, read the manual. To take this Freeman to the next level, what I can do, and we'll look at this patch a little bit more intimately, what you'll notice immediately on this next patch is I actually do have this red amp channel in here. And listen to how different it sounds. takes a minute to switch back and forth but what's different here i have the send and return all the way at the beginning i even have it off i can drag it out of here the reason you might not want to just turn the loop on or off is because then you would also be activating the preamp section of the amplifier so i created a patch just without it basically or with it just completely off and i've added this 
amp. And the X amp is a really good sounding amp model in this thing. So there's no Friedman gain. If I hit the gain here, it stays the same. Things moving around me. And even the volume. I now control everything about that Friedman with the GX100. So there I am using the foot switch or the, the foot volume pedal. Uh, you can come over here to the amplifier. And something you really have to remember when you do this, if you set this up for cable method and then remove the send and return loop, you have to come in and adjust some volumes because you've got to bring the volume down at the memory level. I, as you can see here, I have it down 42% on my other patch here. On the other patch here, the master is at 100, and that's four cable method going through here. I have the output. You're going to want to go to your output sections, of course, and I have the output section of my, of my amplifier. I have it set up right now to line headphones. It's just clear and I have it minus 10. Now for recording, you'd probably kick over to plus four, but that's really going to send a lot of signal into the Friedman. I want to have control over it at a lower level. So I came over to, for the patch that I have the amp model on, I have the master down and I even went to the amp model and brought, as you can see here, the level down to 27. And so now, if I want to change the gain of, of this preamp, I go over here. Okay, so that's a pretty clean, pretty clean sounding preamp. And I can then have my delays after my dis the distortion of the preamp. I personally don't like delay running into distorted preamps or delay into distortion. And I think that's why people want this option. They want to be able to kind of run it the way they would their pedals. And knowing that this is, is an easy thing to do, you then would just kind of place the rest of this chain the same way. I have the foot volume right after the, the preamp section. One thing to notice is you want to turn the speaker type to off. You want to go ahead and just kill the speaker emulation. And now we can change to any of these, any of these preamps now. Now I have my levels under control. And now we can also go over and hit the solo switch and get more noise, you know, more volume, and then kind of control the GX like an amplifier and just use our amplifier as a power amplifier at that point. So setting up four cable method and removing the send return loop from this signal path here within the software or within uh, the GX100, that then is sending everything to your return. So you, you just got to be careful, depending on the amplifier that you have, you're, you're going to have slightly different results. Fenders are going to react differently than Marshall's. You're going to have different controls, which like I was saying, the Saldano control is completely different than any of these do. So then it comes down to kind of setting the volume and the gain for your for the patches where you have where you have your preamp from from your amp and make sure that it matches So you can hear the tonality is completely different now. I've bypassed the Friedman's preamp. I've taken the, 
the distortion, this is almost always distorted. Very hard to get a very clean tone out of it. But here you hear, I have a, a nice clean tone going. Here's a, here's a, here's a bass tone. And then let's just turn that amp off. I mean, turn the octaver off and leave the amp on. So there's some compression on it you can hear. And then if I want to go over here to the amplifier, bring it up a little bit. So there's a JC120, very clean amp, right? That, and it doesn't sound like I'm just going right into the return because I have a preamp model in front of it. And I can go over to any one of these, you know, again, and keep on running through, you know, you can run through all of them until you find something you like. So there you can set up switches to, to go just between the low gain, high, middle gain, and high gain. Some of these amps have three stages. And then you can use the solo switch. give you a volume boost and just a little more crunch out of everything. It takes all of the goodness of the GX100 and all of the different options and it really, I feel like, brings it kind of home to us older players who like having amplifiers, who like having effects. This is a great way to explore some of the sounds within the GX100 and still feel like, yeah, I'm getting my money's worth out of this. So what if I'm not using the model or the, the, the modeling of the IRs, you know, I'm still, I've got my speaker cabinet, I'm going to the gig, I got a much lighter board than the 50 pound board, I've got a, a little seven pound board now that I can carry. And instead of hitting seven buttons, seven pedals, I can hit one button and then go over to another patch. You can program songs, you can program so many different setups and, and still bring your favorite rig with you four cable method if you're if you're familiar with it i hope that i didn't bore you too much with the explanation of the four cable method if you are not familiar with it or if you've kind of messed with it i hope that i've cleared up maybe some of the signal flow and, and some of the ideas that you can do with four cable method and what it means you know how we're going into the preamp and what the difference is between the preamp and the power amp the power amp pushes the speakers, the guitar pushes the preamp, the preamp pushes the power amp. It's all signal flow. We use our drives and our wahs and all that kind of stuff to, to change the preamp level at this, at this point. And then I use choruses and delays and stuff after gains to then give it space. And I think a lot of people approach it that way. A lot of people approach it different. And that's the great thing. You can absolutely approach it however you want using this method. And then just remember, if you take that, say you've come up with a, a, a patch you really like and you want to kind of come, you want to mess around with some of those preamps that are in the GX100, just get rid of that send and return right there. Get that thing out of there. Drag it out of there and grab yourself an amp and put it, you know, I like, Personally, I like to run gains into a preamp. I like to run drive pedals into a preamp. So that's how I place it, you know, that you can put the foot volume over here. You get a slightly different a feel of the foot volume. All sorts of different ways to do it. But I think just having the ability to use all these different amps, these preamps into your favorite kind of setup is really, really fun.
broke a string. See, that's how fun it can be. You just get lost sitting around playing. I've been playing for the whole night. I'm lucky I even managed to film this video, quite honestly. And I'm lucky that you're here watching. If you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it. And consider maybe hitting the like if you've made it this far, giving me a subscribe uh, down at the button there, the little thing there, down there. Yeah, you know, that way you'll know when I put up another video. I don't do it all that often just because I'm busy, but I really like passing on information. So I wanted to kind of give my opinion about the idea that the GX100, you, you, you should look elsewhere if you're looking for a good four cable method multi-effect pedal. I think it's a fantastic thing for that. I have my gripes with the unit. I wish the buttons were a little more responsive. I'd love it if the buttons were a little more responsive. They gave us an update that made the screen a little more responsive, a little easier to use the touchscreen. I actually can get around quicker on the touchscreen than I can using the software, but honestly, I get around the quickest just using the buttons, but it's nice to have the touchscreen there to do some of the things that you can do with it. So that alone that the combination of effects the fact that if you have an amp with a send and return effects loop on the amplifier taking advantage of the send and return in the gx100 it's it becomes mind-blowing because now you're not limited to one preamp or one preamp that's clean and dirty or a very dirty preamp you have the chance to add all sorts of different preamp options you can start running parallel paths within your preamps you can have two stacked preamps the patches that i put up here before in other videos you could take those rearrange them a little bit do some do some changing if you really like those sounds i could absolutely do that right now and and just adjust the volume levels and have dual parallel paths going into a little guy like this and then run it stereo into another guy. You know, it becomes really, it could become the centerpiece to anybody's rig, I think. If you could record with it, you get very similar sounds out of recordings, out of amplifiers. You can utilize your amplifier to an even fuller potential than you maybe have ever realized. So I hope that this little video, um, for one, shows you that you should change the strings before you record a video. And for two, uh, that the GX100 really does fit the bill for somebody looking for the four cable method for it with an amplifier. I've made this video way longer than I wanted to be. Hopefully I'll chop it up into little bittier pieces and it won't quite be the hour and a half of me rambling and all of that, but hopefully I get all the informative parts in. Thank you for being here, everybody. Take care, all right, bye.